What is this class about? Um, listen, like, I'm not going to read you the course description. That's insult insulting to your intelligence. I don't like it when faculty read stuff from slides, when they read the syllabus. It's like, geez, like, like the people there can read the friggin' slide, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm not gonna read it, but I'll kind of just go over it. Basically, you know, hip hop's old at this point. It's like almost 50 as a culture. And it's a culture that started, as we'll learn, you know, with basically working class, working poor, impoverished, uh, you know, young black, you know, teenagers and young brown, mostly Puerto Rican, New York teenagers um, who were the victims of institutional racism, um, you know, direct racism, et cetera, et cetera, in the South Bronx borough of New York. How did that go from being something that these young kids put together, together to give themselves something, to give themselves value and meaning in society and give them a form of place to compete how did that turn into a multi-billion dollar global industry and culture that, you know, um, you know, uh, how did that happen? So we're kind of going to look at that. I mean, the biggest part about this class, you know, um, is we're going to look at like music in the culture from about 1972 to about 1998. Now we'll touch on newer stuff, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into some of the new stuff, um, but it's less of an emphasis. We kind of want to just get you to like the point of where you can kind of understand how we got to wh where we're at and what were the choices and motivations behind a lot of these decisions, the aesthetics of, of, of the music. Um, you know, we're going to spend a lot of time on the beats. Um, as a DJ, like in beat maker, that's where my emphasis is. Uh, I'm less interested in what rappers have to say, to be honest. Um, They've said it a lot, over and over again, these things, you know. Uh, it's rare that I hear a song, I'm like, that's new. Um, you know, now, you know, 50 years later or whatever. Um, although they're important, MCing's important, you know, rapping's important, and we, we spend plenty of time on that. Um, I'm also someone who likes to de-emphasize that and look at, like, the, the choices in beat making and samples. Um, you know, uh, how a DJ does what they do, how beat making is an extension of the, of the DJ. And as we'll learn, like the whole culture started with DJs. Um, you know, it started with people cutting up other people's records. So we'll spend a lot of time too on the music that became hip hop, the funk, the soul, uh, the jazz records that they sampled, the psych rock records and soundtrack records and, um, you know, the stuff that, that became hip hop. Because like for me, like, all music is hip-hop music. You just have to make it hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? You have to just take something and bring it into your own world and add your own salt and pepper to it and chop it up and beat the shit out of it and then put it in the oven and, and present it to the world in a, in a different way. Um, we're going to look at the artistic and political dimensions of, of hip-hop um, because it's often a reflect. You know, music's a reflection of society um, you know, and culture, um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that, but we'll look at the, the various laws, um, sampling laws, drug laws, and how hip-hop reacted, acted, enacted, um, those things in, in, in so many ways. We're going to look at ex aesthetics of the music, so these are choices in sounds, textures, words, images, rhythms, technologies that people used, how they used technologies, how they appropriated technologies, um, etc. to make, make the music itself. Um, but we'll look at like society too. Um, and you know, what was the society and what was the culture like in the South Bronx in the 1970s? What was it like, what was it like in LA in 1993? Um, you know, whatever, okay? Uh, to have success in this class, you know, you don't need to be a hip-hop head. You don't need to know shit about hip-hop. I've had students that hate it. Like, like they don't like it because, you know, what they think is hip-hop is trap music. And trap music is like, it's a branch. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so they're like, that's what they think rap and hip-hop music is. And it's like, well, that's this part. 
But here's this whole other part. So you're going to learn about a whole new bunch of new artists. You're going to learn about a whole a bunch of different types of music, um, you know, and songs that maybe you've never messed with um, in your life. Um, and you may go home to your parents and be like, yo, have you ever heard this Tribe Called Quest song? And your mom's going to be like, yo, you know Bonita Applebaum? That's my joint. You know, like... You may like find something like that happens, you know, which is kind of dope. Expected learning outcomes. You can read that over. You're going to learn some shit and you're going to love it. Um, that's that. Okay. The workload. Listen, there's two modules to complete each week. You should do these each week. Okay. Um, the modules include videos, um, video lectures, and sometimes films. Okay. Um, then there is stuff to do before those. So um, maybe read a couple book chapters, maybe listen to a podcast, and definitely listen to some um, music. Um, I'll, I've made Spotify lists, um, you know, and uh, you know, YouTube playlists and all that shit of stuff you should listen to before the, the, the lectures and stuff. I'll talk a little bit about where you will find all that material. So, you know, you should plan some time for listening. You should plan some time for reading. And then, you know, you got to watch me talk about this shit. <laughs> but basically, each module will be set up pretty simply. There will be a PDF with instructions. It will tell you what you need to do. It will list out what you need to know for the exam. So you can know what the frig to pay attention to um, as you watch the video um, lectures, okay? Um, it will have a link to the PowerPoint slides that I use for the video lectures, um, which are on the canvas, and I'll explain that in a minute. It will have a link to a page called Things to Do Before Class. These are the songs, articles, book chapters, whatever, that you should consume before class, and I'll talk a little bit more, more, more about that okay, in a few minutes here. Um, your grades for this class are based on three exams, each worth 25% in a final presentation. Okay. Um, so you're going to need some time to do the presentation. You need some study time, you know, uh, et cetera, for the exams. And I'll talk about that in a few seconds here. So again, grades. Exams are worth 25% each. Presentation's worth 25%. How do we do grades in this class, right? So let me just say there's two things I do not do in my classes. Number one is 100. You cannot score 100 on the test. Sure you can. There's 50... Uh, True, false, multiple choice questions. And then like 10, 15, 20 bonus questions, okay? You may score a 114. I ain't giving you no 114, okay? Uh, so that's one thing. I'll give you a 99. That's a very good score. The reason why is you can always do a little bit better. I want to motivate people to do better. The one way that you can get a 100 is if you get all of the 50 regular questions right. It's happened once in like my decade of teaching in all of my classes where someone's gotten all of those right. But there's all the bonus questions, so you should have no problem getting a super sweet score of a 99. Okay? The other thing I don't do is I don't give A pluses. Listen, you're on a 4.0 scale. A freaking <laughs> Ichabod, my chick Ichabod. Um, a 4.25 don't exist. It's just, I don't know. It's just ridiculous to me to get an A-plus in college. Um, it just does not exist on the scale of grade. Um, you know, for me, I always look at it as like, oh, it's like giving you a gold sticker, a star sticker for not, you know, going to the bathroom in your pants in class and making it to the bathroom or whatever. It's just juvenile. Um, so I'm sorry for anybody whose GPA is going to go down to a 4.21 because of me. But guess what? You know, y'all are adults. I treat you like adults, so you can get a 99 and an A. An A is an absolutely amazing score. 